I love weirdcore. It's an awesome way for me and a lot of people to express ourselves in a unique way that really hits emotionally. And the community, for the most part, is really friendly and a great place to meet people. But defining weirdcore can be difficult. Some people think this is weirdcore. Then on the opposite end, there are people that gatekeep what weirdcore is. So in this video, I hope to explore and clarify once and for all what weirdcore is. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, the internet was still in its infancy, but it was quickly becoming a hub for creative expression. Online communities sprouted up where like-minded individuals could gather and discuss their shared interests. These early internet users, particularly those interested in digital art, began to push the boundaries of conventional artistic mediums. The rise of these online communities played an essential role in shaping emerging digital art forms, as people could easily share the creations and get immediate feedback. The internet was a blank canvas, waiting for artists to splash their creativity on it. Early message boards, forums, and image sharing platforms like 4chan, DeviantArt, and Newgrounds were a hotbed for experimental digital art. On these platforms, users could post and discuss their work without the formal constraints that traditional art galleries or exhibitions imposed. This environment fostered a sense of creative freedom and encouraged artists to explore new techniques and ideas. These platforms were the birthplaces of various internet subcultures and aesthetics, including Weirdcore. The internet served as an incubator, allowing artists to collaborate, iterate, and ultimately refine their styles. As the early internet culture grew, so did the role of anonymous artists in shaping the digital art world. With the newfound freedom to create without their real world identities being linked to their work, artists found a way to unleash their creativity, experiment with new concepts, and explore unconventional art forms. This anonymity played a crucial role in the development of the weirdcore aesthetic, which emerged as a direct result of this outpouring of unbridled artistic expression. Anonymous artists didn't have to worry about the judgment or expectations that come with attaching one's name to a piece of work. They could create purely for the sake of exploration and self-expression, allowing them to push the boundaries of their art in ways they might not have dared if they were creating under their own name. This is why many of the pioneering pieces of weirdcore art can be traced back to unidentified individuals who made their mark on the internet and then disappeared, leaving their enigmatic creations behind, like Sanford, Kissed, etc. The contributions of these anonymous artists were invaluable in the development of Weirdcore. They used the digital tools available at the time, like Photoshop and MS Paint, to play with distorted imagery, juxtaposition, and surrealism, which are now hallmark features of the Weirdcore aesthetic. As a result, this aesthetic became a medium where artists could explore the strange and unfamiliar with the assurance that they could do so without the pressure of recognition or the risk of being pigeonholed into a specific style or genre. Now let's talk about the actual exact details that go into Weirdcore. All the literal editing techniques and elements that are used to make Weirdcore, Weirdcore. Weirdcore is all about using digital tricks to make images look strange and unsettling. Distortions are used to tweak and twist things in the picture. Imagine seeing a stretched or blurry version of something you know. It feels off, right? That's because our brains like when things look familiar and predictable. Then there are glitch effects, where the images have intentional errors. It might seem like the picture is broken or has technical issues. It adds to a sense of chaos to the picture. Weirdcore doesn't stop there. It also pulls in dreamy and surreal visuals. Surreal is when you blend dream elements and reality in odd ways. You might see unusual mixes of objects and places that make you question what's real. On the on the other hand, dreamy images feel soft, foggy, or floaty, like you've stepped into a dream or another world. Alright, let's get into this thing called juxtaposition. Basically, in Weirdcore, it's about placing things in a scene where they don't typically belong. Ever seen a picture where the sky is replaced with a vast expanse of water, or mysterious orbs of light hover in the most unexpected places? Maybe you've noticed parts of an image intentionally blocked out with black voids or squares, making it 
feel incomplete or censored. That's what we're talking about here. These random placements make your brain do a double take. It's like walking into a room and finding your bed floating in the air. Something's not right and you can't help but feel thrown off. That element of surprise, that something's off here feeling, is what makes Weird Core so intriguing. The beauty of this technique? It shakes up the mundane. It keeps those who encounter Weird Core questioning and always looking for more hidden elements or meaning. It's the aesthetic sneaky way of saying reality isn't always what it seems. Alright, you ever seen an old TV show or a super old YouTube video where the quality is kinda bad? Or the image is all grainy, maybe there are some weird blocks or patterns, and everything looks a bit faded? That's kind of what happens with low quality JPEG compression. And in Weirdcore, artists deliberately use this effect. Now, you might be thinking, why would someone mess up a perfectly good image on purpose? Well, there's a method to this madness. That grainy, deteriorated look, it gives the image a certain aged feel, almost like you stumbled upon an old, forgotten photograph from decades ago. Just to show you how powerful JPEG compression is. Here's an image I took before I compressed it, and then here it is after I compressed it. There's also something about that low quality vibe that makes everything feel more mysterious. It's like trying to remember a distant dream. Parts are clear, but others are fuzzy and ambiguous. By using this type of compression, Weirdcore taps into our sense of nostalgia, reminding us of old computer graphics or photos from a bygone era. But it's not just about reminiscing. The grain also adds to the eeriness. It's the uncertainty, the feeling that there's more lurking beneath the pixelated surface that keeps us engaged and a little on edge. So in essence, the whole bad quality on purpose thing is a genius move to play with our emotions and perceptions, making the weird core aesthetic that much more captivating and, well, weird. All right, let's talk about a font that we all know too well. Arial. It's like the default setting of life. Remember the days of typing up school assignments or those super old internet pages? Arial was the go-to. Simple, straightforward, and literally everywhere. And guess what? This everyday font has snuck its way into the world of Weirdcore. Well, first up, its simplicity is its charm. Because Arial's been around for too long, especially back in the early 2000s, slapping it onto a Weirdcore edit instantly takes you back in time. It feels like finding an old school meme or a dusty digital relic from the dial-up era. But here's the thing. Because Arial is so, well, normal, it feels kind of weird when you see it in a weird court context. Imagine finding, like, your everyday coffee mug in a haunted house. The mug isn't spooky, but where it is and how it's presented makes it feel out of place. That's what Arial does in weird core. It's something we know and see every day, but in the setting, it feels off. Like nostalgia got a little twist. Basically, the everydayness of Arial tricks our brains a bit. We see it and think, oh, familiar. But with all the other eerie stuff in Weirdcore, it ends up feeling strange and different. Bright lights and glowing orbs pop up all the time in Weirdcore imagery. At first glance, they might look kind of mesmerizing, like those lights you'd chase during a late night walk, or the orbs you'd see in fantasy movies. But in the context of Weirdcore, they serve a more eerie purpose. These lights and orbs, as alluring as they are, bring in an otherworldly feel. They stand out, contrasting starkly with the often muted or distorted backgrounds, drawing your attention immediately. It's almost as if they're trying to guide you or lure you in. There's a duality in them. They represent both safety, like a beacon, and something unknown, which is pretty unsettling. So, while they add a touch of magic, they also heighten the eeriness of the whole scene. Black voids and rectangles are like the ultimate cliffhangers in the world of Weirdcore. Ever watched a movie or read a book where something crucial was just left out? That feeling of I need to know is what these voids and rectangles create. By obscuring or hiding parts of an image, they add a layer of mystery. Your brain can't help but wonder what's behind or beneath them. But it's not just about keeping a secret. These blacked out sections also bring in a strong sense of unease. They create a visual disruption, making scenes feel incomplete or tampered with. It's like looking at a familiar room, but with one section just blanked out. It's both intriguing Okay, so, you know when you're home alone and you suddenly hear a random noise, 
and even though you tell yourself it's probably just the house settling, you still feel a tiny chill down your spine. That's the kind of vibe Weirdcore gives off, but visually. The whole aesthetic is like an expertly crafted haunted house, designed not to jump scare you, but to make you feel constantly on edge. Let's break it down. The visuals we talked about earlier, from the glowing orbs to the black voids and everything in between, they all work together like pieces of a puzzle. When you put them together, they create this environment that's familiar, yet just off enough to make you feel uncomfortable. Think of it as seeing your everyday world, but through a slightly distorted mirror. What's genius about it is how it taps into our primal fears. Our brains are wired to notice when something's not quite right, like a survival instinct, and Weirdcore plays on that. The familiar is mixed with the bizarre, making you question what's real. And the disconnection from reality? That comes from how Weirdcore doesn't let you ground yourself. Just when you think you've got a grasp on an image, there's some element that throws you off. Alright, picture this. You're going through your old stuff and find a toy from your childhood. That warm, fuzzy feeling you get, that's nostalgia. Now, imagine that toy starts moving on its own in a way it shouldn't. The warm fuzzies quickly turn to chills, right? That's the magic trick Weirdcore pulls off. Weirdcore dives deep into the toy box of early internet culture. We're talking pixelated graphics, those base images that look like they've been ripped straight from an old Windows 98 desktop, and of course, fonts like Arial. For many, these elements scream childhood or simpler times. It's like finding a time capsule from the early days of the internet. But here's where it gets twisty. While part of you is basking in the memories of old school internet vibes, Weirdcore throws in some curveballs. Those visual distortions, black voids, and bright orbs we talked about. So on the one hand, you're being comforted by the nostalgia, and on the other hand, you're pulled out of that comfort zone by the eeriness. It's like uh, if you're given like a warm blanket, but then it like gives you a static shock every few seconds, you know? That was such a dumb analogy. This mix is pure genius because it captures how we often remember the past. We see it through rose tinted glasses, but there's always that underlying knowledge that not everything was as perfect as we remember. Weirdcore plays with this balance between the cozy, I remember this feelings and the jarring, wait, was it really like that? Reactions. Let's look at some classic Weirdcore edits now to put all of this in perspective. As you look at these classic images, you'll notice a deliberate choice to pull elements from the early internet and old school technology. The artists weren't just randomly choosing these components, they were making a statement about the past and the feelings it evokes. There's an intentional bridge being built between the past's familiar comfort and the unsettling unknown. The emotions you might be feeling, that mix of nostalgia, eeriness, and discomfort, they weren't accidental. These artists aimed to create create that delicate balance. They wanted the viewer to be lulled into a sense of familiarity, only to be jolted by the unexpected twists in the imagery. Fast forward to today, and the Weirdcore aesthetic has evolved. While the essence remains, contemporary artists have added their flavor, infusing it with the current cultural nuances and technological advancements. Check out these modern pieces. At first glance, you can tell they're Weirdcore, but there's something fresh about them. Maybe it's the way they play with new themes and ideas that weren't present in the classics. You might notice more sophisticated digital manipulation techniques. While the early pieces were more about looking back, these modern interpretations engage with the here and now. They resonate with today's generation while giving a nod to the past. These works, while rooted in the foundational aspects of Weirdcore, show how fluid and adaptive an aesthetic can be. They prove that while art Art styles have a core, they're also a living, breathing thing that shifts and grows with time. You know that feeling when you look at an old family photo and there's a thumb blocking half the camera lens? There's something oddly charming and endearing about these imperfections, isn't there? It's a reminder that behind every image, there's a story, often filled with innocent mistakes and real, genuine moments. In the world of Weirdcore, these flaws aren't just random occurrences, but a deliberate choice. Think about the not-so-smooth cutouts or those colors that don't quite match up. On the surface, these could be viewed as mistakes, the result of someone who hasn't mastered Photoshop. But in the realm of Weirdcore, it's gold. These amateurish editing techniques serve a deeper purpose. Why? 
because they capture an era when many of us were just starting to experiment with digital tools. Remember trying to erase the background of an image for the first time and leaving jagged edges everywhere? Or that phase where every photo had to have an over-the-top, mismatched color filter? It was a time of learning and play, and the imperfections made the results all the more personal and memorable. By weaving these elements into its fabric, Weirdcore taps into that rich vein of nostalgia, reminding us of the beauty found in life's perfectly imperfect moments. Early attempts at photo editing can be seen as a reflection of this adventurous spirit. There were no set rules, just pure creativity. Maybe the lighting was all wrong, or the shadows made no logical sense, but who cared? It was a representation of someone pushing the boundaries, playing with tools, but most importantly, having fun. When we look at Weirdcore's use of these seemingly amateur techniques, it's a nod to this golden era of digital exploration. It's less about the polished end result and more about the journey of creation. It's a celebration of those early days when digital art was less about perfection and more about letting one's imagination run wild. Now that we understand Weirdcore a little better, let's dive into how Weirdcore stacks up against other internet aesthetics, like Dreamcore, Traumacore, and Liminal Spaces. Each of these styles has its own unique vibe and way of expressing things, but they all share some common ground with Weirdcore. When it comes to internet aesthetics, both Weirdcore and Dreamcore share an affinity for surreal imagery, often seen in their use of liminal spaces and unusual visuals. The shared use of surreal imagery in both aesthetics creates an otherworldly feeling, like you've entered an alternate universe or a bizarre dream. Dream. But it's the atmosphere and intention behind each aesthetic that sets them apart. Weirdcore tends to create an ominous and unsettling atmosphere, whereas Dreamcore, despite its surreal elements, typically evokes feelings of nostalgia and comfort. They may share similarities, but they're like two sides of the same coin. Think of it like this. Imagine you're having a vivid dream where you're in a place that looks familiar, but something's off. In Dreamcore, this place might be brighter, almost glowing with pastel colors and objects or characters are present and they have a certain dreamlike quality. You might see odd combinations like floating buildings or eyes with wings, but there's a nostalgic feel to it, like you're remembering some corner of your childhood, but it's been tweaked in a strange, almost magical way. Dreamcore visuals make you feel like you're in a dream, where the rules of reality don't apply. Weirdcore, on the other hand, takes a darker approach. The visuals still have the surreal quality, but there's an uneasy, creepy undertone. Imagine you're in that same dream, but now the colors are more muted and the familiar places look empty and unsettling. It's like walking through an abandoned theme park at night. The unusual objects and characters in Weirdcore create a sense of discomfort, making you feel like you've stumbled upon something you weren't supposed to see. The intention behind each aesthetic also differs. Dreamcore often aims to evoke feelings of comfort, nostalgia, or escapism, like you're revisiting some distant memory or lost world. Weirdcore, again on the other hand, aims to disturb and unsettle, to make you question your surroundings and challenge your perception of reality. Alright, now let's talk about Weirdcore and Traumacore, specifically the themes of discomfort and unease that both of these aesthetics bring out. When we look at these two styles, they definitely have a way of making us feel a bit uncomfortable or uneasy, but they do it in two vastly different ways. Let's talk about Traumacore. This one is different because it deals with real life stuff that's tough to handle, like abuse or trauma. Instead of making you feel weird it out like Weirdcore, Traumacore might make you feel uncomfortable because it touches on painful experiences. People who create Traumacore images are often trying to express their feelings about things that hurt them. So you might see cute pictures mixed with sad or angry messages like a teddy bear with the words, why did you hurt me, written on it. The main difference between Weirdcore and Traumacore comes down to what they're trying to express. Weirdcore is all about creating a creepy, dreamlike world where things don't make sense. On the other hand, Traumacore is about expressing real-life pain and emotion. It's not about creating a strange world, it's about trying to cope with the tough stuff that happens in the real world. When you look at Traumacore images, you might feel a connection to the pain that the person is trying to express, and that's what makes it uncomfortable. Weirdcore and liminal spaces are two aesthetics that are often mentioned together because they both play with spatial concepts and evoke feelings of displacement. But let's break it down and explore how these two aesthetics differ, particularly in their focus and subjects. It's interesting to 
know that there's quite a bit of overlap between weird core and liminal spaces. At first glance, they might seem quite different, but once you dig a little deeper, you'll notice that weird core often takes liminal spaces as its starting point and then adds elements that make it unique. Okay, by the way, guys, I'm sick right now, and recording this script, I think, is finally catching up with me, so my voice might sound a little bit off from here on out. Um, yeah. Think of liminal spaces as the base layer of a digital art piece, with weird core as the finished product. Liminal spaces are those in-between areas, empty hallways, deserted malls, vacant hotel lobbies, places that feel weirdly empty and disquieting when there's no one around. They're places that are meant to be bustling with activity, but are for some reason abandoned. That's what gives them the eerie, unsettling vibe. Now, Weirdcore takes these liminal spaces and sprinkles a dash of weirdness on top. It takes the already uncanny vibe of these spaces and amplifies it. It might add floating objects, unusual color filters, or throw in a character from an early 2000s video game. These edits create a surreal, almost dreamlike atmosphere, where you're not quite sure what's real and what's not. The base liminal space images in Weirdcore edits carry a lot of that same eerie vibe, but what sets Weirdcore apart is its playful and absurd twists. In other words, for all this, liminal spaces provide the foundation for Weirdcore. They offer the initial sense of displacement and unease, which Weirdcore then builds upon by adding bizarre elements and surreal edits. The liminal space captures the feeling of being some where you shouldn't be, or of being in a place that has lost its purpose. Weirdcore capitalizes on this feeling and exaggerates it by adding things that further disrupt our expectations. After everything we've learned today, how can we define a weirdcore? At its core, weirdcore is an aesthetic that pulls from the digital fragments of the late 90s and early 2000s, melding them together in ways that are both familiar and alien. It's like opening a time capsule filled with the raw, unpolished edges of early internet culture, only to find that it's been reimagined in a dream or perhaps a distortion of our memories. Through its intentional imperfections, off-kilter juxtapositions, and the heady mix of nostalgia and discomfort, Weirdcore offers a visual journey that straddles the line between the known and the unknown. But beyond the visuals, Weirdcore is also an emotion, a feeling that taps into our collective digital past, but twists it in a way that leaves us feeling both at home and eerily unsettled. It's a call back to a time when the internet was still largely uncharted territory, filled with excitement and potential dangers where the lines between reality and the digital realm were blurrier. So, as we reflect in Weirdcore's magnetic pool, we must ask ourselves, is its allure rooted solely in the past, or is it a mirror reflecting our current relationship with the digital world and its ever-evolving mysteries?